Hey guys, I'm Ander or FBI Open Up, and this is a gear guide on one of the most popular destroyers in the game, Yuki Kaze sama. On this channel, we refer to her as our goddess, and it is in the best interest to worship the Nanoda. Now that you know, let's get into some potential gear loadouts. Now moving on to some Yuki Kaze gear basics. She is a torpedo focused destroyer with emphasis on her survivability. Yukikaze's two skills right here dramatically improve the survival of herself as well as her fleet. Her signature blue skill, the unsinkable lucky ship, lives up to its name. It's got a massive 25% proc rate whenever she takes damage, and then she reduces that damage to literally one. That means that one fourth of the time, Yukikaze-sama over here is just going to completely skip damage and combine with her super high evasion right here, 200 plus. That means she is one of the best tanks due to her impressive survivability. Now this skill, combined with her yellow skill, Yukikaze of Kure, Kure? Curry? I don't know. Which reduces backline damage by 8%, as well as healing a backline ship for 10% once they drop below 20%, makes her a very good person in any fleet, and she's especially good in PvP due to this skill. Now moving into the general slash all-purpose build, the first slot will be a fast-firing main gun to maximize the amount of times that she can proc her all-out assault. You may be wondering, why would you want to proc her all-out assault so much? Well, it's because of these four torpedoes that she shoots right there. Let me replay it again. Now this is good because this is her other source of damage, other than the regular torpedoes that she shoots, since she has very low firepower. We'll get into that one minute from now. So the best main gun for this is going to be the twin 100mm because it has that times 4 multiplier so that you will shoot a lot of bullets to go and break shields faster and also it's got a fast fire rate. Now you may be wondering why don't you use the 76mm that's because it only has a times 1 multiplier meaning that it only shoots 1 times the bullets while this one shoots 4 times the bullets. This means that this is 4 times better at shooting shields and breaking them compared to this one. It does have in fact a faster reload though, so if you want to have the fastest possible all-out assault, then you should use the 76mm. They are both very good guns for Yukikaze, and I recommend using either of them. Now if you don't have the 76mm, you can also use the single 120mm, but the only thing is this has a 0.08 second slower reload compared to the 76mm, so if you do have this one compared to the other one, Definitely use the 76mm over the single 120mm. Now you may be wondering why I said use a less damaging and faster firing gun, even though you could use a more damaging main gun like the Gold Twin 127mm. Well, this is because Yuki Kaze sama has a very low firepower since she is a torpedo focused cruiser, I mean, not cruiser, destroyer, so a more, main da more damaging main gun. Will not contribute much to her overall DPS. Now on top of that, she also has a low main gun efficiency, meaning that she will not be able to do much damage per main gun shot, so this means that although she may not be doing much damage with her actual gun, the fast fire rate but the low damage will mean that she will be able to activate her all out assault more often, which is where she deals most of her damage anyway. So this is what you're trying to go and get. If you have a faster firing gun, you will be able to shoot the all-out assault more often. If you do want to know more about these two types of destroyers, I explain them in my destroyer's equipment guide, one being the torpedo focused cruiser, not cruisers, I keep saying cruisers, destroyers, the torpedo focused destroyers, as well as others like the firepower focused destroyers like Laffy over here. I have some marine gear on her because right now I'm trying to do the SOS missions. Where's Yukikaze? Okay, right there. Now, in the second slot, you would want a good torpedo that can make use of her very good torpedo stat, as I said. Now, Yukikaze has a super high torpedo stat at 556 at 120, compared to other super high torpedo stat people, like Ayanami, who has 598. So they are both very, very high up there, and they should definitely be using the best possible torpedo that you have to go and maximize their damage. Now, of course, for this, I'll go past this real quick. The best, usually for auto, is going to be the Rainbow Magnet Torpedo, but 
you don't most people will not have a lot of these so you can always use the quintuple 533 millimeter this is also very good for auto and you can also use oh the quadruple oh let's use the plus 10 version you can use the quadruple magnetic torpedoes they are also very good because of their tracking and they i'd only recommend the quadruple version and not the quintuple version because the quadruple version has much better reload and timing better which is better than the quintuple which has a horrible reload now of course the honorable mention always can go to the purple version of the quadruple 533 millimeter which has the exact same stats as its gold 533 millimeter except this is the purple one and it only shoots four of the torpedoes instead of five now you can also use the 610 millimeter which is what i use this is the best for manual play as each torpedo does more damage and it travels faster but you are only going to be shooting four instead of five like a quintuple 533 or a quintuple 533 magnet now the third slot can be any gold anti-air gun because destroyers do not have an impressive anti-air to begin with if you do want more anti-air just use a light cruiser like san diego or something don't rely on your yukikaze over here to take down the planes for you now auxiliary gears yukikaze has a lot of different choices depending on your playstyle Generally the all-purpose build is going to be one rainbow dildo or a pure oxygen torpedo because this will give her a very nice torpedo DPS boost by increasing her torpedo stat by a very respectable 100. Now you can also put a repair toolkit because this gives her a very good survival boost since destroyers already have the high evasion so all they need to do is upgrade their health points a little bit so that they will be much more survivable. Now the next build that I would like to cover is the PvP build. It focuses on your Yukikaze to not die as much as possible. The only slots that have changed from last time are the auxiliary slots. You would want as much HP because this will allow your Yukikaze to survive as much as possible because this will give her more room to use her blue skill which is basically going to let her negate all of that damage and her high evasion is already very good. So having more HP will probably make her survive the longest. The best for this is going to be the Repair Toolkit, because it gives you 500 extra HP, and it also does have that nice little percentage max HP every 15 seconds. And also you could put Pearl's Tears on. Pearl's Tears is very good on Yukikaze, because she will probably be the last Vanguard to sink. This being because of her, again, blue skill, that negates damage one-fourth of the time, basically. Now, this means that by the time your Yukikaze does sink, your fleet will most likely be damaged by that point, and they will benefit greatly by the nice HP recovery that Pearl's Tears provides. You could also switch around the Repair Toolkit for an Advanced Boiler if you want. The Advanced Boiler will give Yukikaze more speed so that she could dodge everything, but do keep in mind that the Advanced Boiler does provide a little less HP than your Repair Toolkit, so you might not have as much hit points to play with. Now of course, no gear guide would be complete without at least one meme loadout, so the final build is the maximum damage build. It's back, but now it's for Nanoda-sama. This is actually really good for one-shotting that one cognitive chip daily boss, so it's actually got a use unlike Centaur's I am speed loadout. You can actually possibly use this in a real thing. Now first of all, you'd want a blue 76mm AA gun got the fastest fire rate so you can trigger that juicy all out assault for more damage as much as possible Phew, torpedoes next for the torpedoes as i just said you'd want the quadruple 610 because it's got the highest torpedo damage because she has a very high torpedo stat and she shoots torpedoes from her all out assault y you're getting where i'm going with this right maximum torpedo damage anti-air guns don't matter for yukikaze but guess what these auxiliary gears do, you see, one and two, you want a double rainbow dildo oxygen torpedo for your Yukikaze to give her a massive 200 torpedo boost. This means that in total she probably has like seven, 780, 700, basically 900, nah, 800, what am I talking about? Anyway, massive, it's massive torpedo damage. 
and unlike Centaur's Iron Speed loadout, this build is actually pretty useful and fairly, and it can work fairly well if you're using her on a map where she can survive without any extra survival gear. Yeah. To demonstrate Yuki Kaze-sama in action, I will use my IJN Torpedo Fleet to completely wipe out some of these random people in PvP. Oh shoot. Oh shoot, I forgot. You know what, I'll keep the meme loadout on her. I was about to change it back to the regular one, but you know what. Yuki Kaze with her meme torpedo loadout, let's go. Okay, I don't care about small merchant escort, I care about damage. Okay, uh, sorry Overlord Fury, but you're going down to my IJN exercise unit. And speaking of Yuki Kaze, here she is again! So... Hopefully this isn't you, whoever Overlord Fury is, because you're about to get torpedoed. Wow. And the one time I do a torpedo showcase, none of the torpedoes hit the back line. Well, that's awkward. Um, I guess we'll have to wait. Hey, Yuki Kaze is little all out of salt. That was cute. Oh, that was Nagato's Mirage. Uh-oh. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh my god, it's really laggy. Um, yeah, see? Yuki Kaze is not dying yet because she has fantastic survivability. And also she's got that nice backline heal, and her backline is getting kept alive because of that nice 8%. And guess what? Yuki Ka Nagato, I mean. And then Worst Fight finishes it off. Yeah. Yuki, Yuki Kaze is very strong in PvP. And somehow she just survived with the meme loadout, I just realized. Wait, she survived with a meme loadout? Okay, maybe the meme loadout's actually really powerful. You can try that for yourself, but with those exercises finished, this will conclude my gear guide for Yuki Kaze. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. No, we want Yuki Kaze-sama. Go back to Yuki Kaze. Yuki Kaze. There we go. Don't forget to press the notification bell for my future uploads. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you have any other ship suggestions, please leave a comment, and I'll consider adding them to my list. With that being said, well, that's all I have for this video, so I'll see you guys later. Bye!